Hello. Um, I'm Olave Hainler from Estonian Maritime Administration. And uh, before I uh, actually start my presentation, I thought I'd give you a little background. What is a navigational warning? Because uh, perhaps many of you know, but many also don't, that uh, for the safety of navigation, different information is published among that navigational chart, navigational publications, and there's also other different aids like navigational aids and lights, but also a very important aspect of the navigational information is uh, navigational warnings. Um, and so what are the things that we warn mariners about? Um, they can be um, uncharted object that is not on the chart, like uh, rocks. Could be floating dangers, like uh, logs dropped off uh, a ship or uh, containers. Uh, also, there is different urgent information. Uh, most frequently, uh, we uh, publish warnings about aids to navigation. Can be repairs of a light uh, or uh, repairs of a fixed mark. Can be malfunctions of a light or it can be buoys that are off position, that are uh, giving uh, mariners false information. Uh, also, there is uh, different events at sea uh, that are uh, temporary and sometimes extraordinary that may obstruct safe uh, navigation. Even events like uh, mine sweeping. Uh, uh, then there is uh, pipeline or cable laying. Uh, it can be military exercises or uh, rescue exercises but also uh, many, many different uh, underwater works and, and uh, large uh, regattas or different types of things. So um, the oldest method of transmitting this information is uh, over the radio. Uh, this is where on a um, agreed channel over medium or very high frequency wave wavelength, uh, navigation warning is transmitted to the navigators. Each country, warning, uh, each country forwards navigational warnings for its economical zone. For example, in Estonia, all navigational warnings uh, in force are transmitted over the radio every four hours. Then a navigator or a skipper then listens to the warnings and applies the warnings uh, to a paper chart or inserts them into the navigational system. Uh, just in case you have not heard a navigational warning, I will. Oops. I will display you one. I have to start it here. It's a Swedish navigation warning. Voice, voice. No. I want to add sound. OK. Anyway, you got the idea. Please, can we get back to the presentation? Thank you. You got the idea. It's very hard to get coordinates out of a warning in a radio. You just have to uh, listen very carefully and hope you get them right. So, a second option. Mm. Now I need the voice off. Just don't touch any wrong buttons. Thank you. It's much easier on my computer. Second option to get a navigation warning is a Navtex. It's a system that prints these uh, navigation warnings. And the uh, Baltic Sea is covered with uh, four Navtex stations. And the uh, Navtex is usually equipment of a commercial shipping. Uh, and for some vessel classes, Navtex is compulsory. Because uh, Navtex transmission slot is limited then only warnings uh, related to major fairways and very important get transmitted. So the contents of the warning may vary depending on the output is radio or Navtex, because the audience is uh, different. So in the development of maritime safety information, uh, radio services for shipping was initiated actually by the Titanic disaster. This is where they started to transmit um, navigation information over the radio. 
and Navtex has been used since around the 80s. Uh, but when collecting information through internet became uh, a habit for everybody, then also the navigation warnings moved to internet. For example, Estonia started uh, publishing navigation warnings in internet in uh, 2008 or uh, nine. So pretty soon the warnings were very common sight on the home pages of maritime administrations and hydrographic offices. The advantages of this navigation warning uh, on a web page is that you can copy text and uh, insert it to the navigation system and uh, it's an easier way to, to uh, get the navigation in the, on the screen of your navigational system. And in case you have forgotten, during this introduction, this is a GIS user conference. Uh, we have finally reached the subject. So in 2016, we developed a uh, customized GIS solution for the navigation warnings in uh, co collaboration with our uh, local ESRI representative. With this GIS, uh, we wanted to create an environment uh, where users have a clear overview of the navigation or warnings in force. They can easily see the location, spatial shape, and detailed information of the warning. We also wanted the portal to be compatible with all browsers and adaptive to all devices. For ourselves as administrators of the system, we wanted to create uh, a, a system which would allow us to uh, compose navigation warnings based on uh, already pre-made templates, uh, inserting data from other sources uh, and storing navigational warnings in uh, geodatabase. And also very important is to register the source data and documents related to warnings. Uh, the public portal is uh, very simple. Um, On the left side of the screen, the user sees an overview of the navigation warnings in force. Uh, the warnings can be opened for additional information. Uh, they see all the necessary components of a warning, traditional components. Uh, and the light gray background eases the overview of the warnings in force. Now, uh, if the user uh, wishes, then uh, he or she can um, choose navigation chart as the background to the warning uh, to get additional information about the location and the surrounding navigational conditions of the navigational warning. Uh, web mapping service of our up-to-date uh, navigational charts uh, provides uh, depth data, fairways, uh, surrounding gates to navigation, uh, information about cables, uh, harbors, anchorage areas, and uh, many other important things for a navigator. Uh, while the simplicity is the core value of our uh, public portal, then uh, behind it is a sophisticated administration portal. The administration of navigation warnings is a 24-hour job handled by uh, navigation information specialists and uh, VTS operators. Uh, we are not allowed to make any mistakes in those warnings and uh, all data must be recorded and uh, saved for later references. Uh, the, navigation, uh, the administration environment features uh, a third party, party authentication module that helps us to administer users at uh, three different uh, levels. The access levels are viewer, editor and uh, administrator. Then there are uh, two different servers running. One is for the live portal, and the other uh, is for testing and uh, development of the portal. Then there is a geodatabase that is uh, storing all the necessary geodata and uh, other information. Uh, then there are uh, connections to external databases and services. You already saw the background of the navigational charts but the administration environment also allows us to use geometry from our uh, other databases like uh, ACE navigation database where there are fairways and uh, also geometry from military practice areas and chart catalog. Uh, all the work uh, done by 
editors is uh, done in a single window custom web based administration environment. And we will look at uh, those uh, administration environment features in next slides. Um, the administration, it's really hard to see it from here. However, the administration portal is divided into uh, uh, three tabs. Um, and here is a short overview of uh, two of them. Uh, there is a warnings tab where you can search and view the database of uh, warnings uh, by their status, if they are uh, archived, if they are active, or uh, and uh, each you can search them by text, status, area, uh, uh, warning type, and time valid. For example, we can search for all archived warnings uh, since July this year for the Gulf of Finland. Uh, then there's the text tab, which is uh, for creating navigation and warning uh, templates and editing the templates of navigation and warnings. If necessary, uh, the text templates can be composed using uh, special parameters for values that are automatically inserted uh, from the attributes of the chosen object from our external databases. And the third tab is for uh, composing a, a navigation or to edit the drafts of the navigation warnings that have not yet been published. So instead of writing a navigation warning, uh, the um, administrator or the editor can follow simple steps by uh, selecting the warning type of our pre-composed uh, template, then uh, choosing the output of the warning. Let's say we want to publish a warning over the radio and also by Navtex and in our portal. Then selecting the area that is important criteria for the navigator. Assign the time when the warning will be published. If we know the duration of the warning, we can also assign the end time because uh, this is a sample warning uh, about a buoy, then we can activate the layer from our HD navigation database. We can then uh, select and use the coordinates uh, from the attributes of the, of the selected buoy. And uh, once these, these are used, uh, based on those coordinates, we can assign the paper charts that are affected by this warning, the paper charts catalog is also part of our uh, geodatabase. If we wish, we can add a source document or a comment for an internal, per internal reference. And finally, uh, we create the text of the navigation warning with a click. The texts are created with correct coordinates and attributes from our uh, database and don't need any editing, but can be edited if uh, necessary. Uh, for confirmation, we can look at the preview of the navigation or warning and choose if we wish to save a draft for later publishing, uh, publish immediately, or uh, uh, delay the warning. Uh, from the beginning, you might remember that uh, not all navigation warnings about, are about uh, a point object or a, a single point object. There are numerous events at sea uh, that we reflect. So uh, for creating more customized warning, there is a possibility to add uh, custom objects from our database of areas often used for warnings. For example, military practice areas, uh, but also it can be any ge geometry. And also we can draw geometry for the warnings and create warnings with multiple geometry. Uh, because single geometry is always uh, not sufficient for a navigational warning. So what happens when we publish the warning? It's published in our uh, portal. It is sent automatically to Tallinn Radio, where the operator records it, and it is transmitted every four hours over the radio. Then the Baltic Sea Navtex coordinator will send it out via message to every vessel that is tuned into the selected Navtex area. So we have one more channel for the navigation warnings. Uh, and it's a very valuable channel. Um, 
because it has a graphic spatial dim dimension, unlike uh, radio and Navtex. Uh, it's a good development, but unfortunately it's not good enough. Uh, the portal helps to get an overview of the warnings that are related to your voyage, but a web portal uh, today is often not considered an uh, official uh, tool, even if we declare it official and the internet is something not always available at sea if you want to check the warnings during the voyage. So the mariner, uh, as you can see from the photo here, is still stuck with uh, a lot of manual work. And this is where the future standards come into play. This slide here uh, is an overview of the International Hydrographic Organization S100 Future Standard Series. Uh, oops. Okay. Um, the S124 standard is highlighted in yellow, and uh, this will become a useful tool to get the navigational warnings from GIS directly to the navigators on board on their uh, navigation information uh, system screen. Uh, currently, there is a S24 um, test project running in the Baltic Sea that is testing how to get the navigation warnings to ships in a new way. The goal of this project is to test how to transmit navigation warnings with location information and actual geometry uh, to the screen of the navigation warning system. Uh, S24, S124 will allow a standardized format to forward only navigation warnings relevant to the chosen route and time of the voyage. They will be sent directly to the navigation system on board the ship where the geometry and the contents of the navigation warning will be displayed. Navigation warnings not relevant to the route or the voyage time will not be received by the vessel. This will significantly reduce the information uh, noise and uh, contribute well to the safety of uh, navigation. So uh, there's still uh, some work to do, uh, but uh, with a bit of tuning in the GIS and a bit of work on the standards, uh, we will hopefully soon be able to get the navigation warnings directly from GIS on the screen of the navigator on the vessel. That's it for me. Visit our portal and if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Actually, we had one question. But you already answered to that question during your presentation, so it was good presentation. Okay, so, so everything is clear for everybody. But uh, maybe you can comment. Uh, we are always speaking ab about benefits. Maybe there are some issues which should be improved if, if we are speaking about JS right now, existing system. I mean, our existing system, yes, it needs uh, it needs some additional tuning. Uh, <laughs> but we are working on them with our uh, S3. <laughs> Uh, representative in Estonia, and uh, I will introduce them next year. Okay, it's a good cooperation. <laughs> good luck for it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.